I'm home court, you standing trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? I'm home court, you standing trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? They ain't believing me in the beginning. Who wanna hang around now they see me winning? I'm home court, you standing trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? What's up, world? This is your boy, Big Court, from the Holding Court Podcast. You already know what it is. And today's episode is sponsored by Manyati. Yeah, so this is my big brother, Master P. Shoe. This is high fashion, high class. Um, this is really a, a great product, a real sturdy shoe. Actually, I, I own probably a dozen of these. Um, my favorites are the Leopards, you know what I mean? A little style, so they got something for everybody. You want sports, basketball, leisure, casual, whatever it is. Uh, Magnati.com, Italian-made shoes, but black-owned. So go to Magnati.com, you already know what it is. There's no limit to your success. Yo, 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 what's good? It's your boy Big Court here at the Holding Court Podcast with my boy, producer Ken. What's up? What up, what up? All right, man, today we got a special guest. Come on now. My homeboy. Come on you know now. What I'm saying Missouri. Oh, no. Missouri. Illinois. Missouri or Illinois? Yeah, St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. I ain't I in Illinois. No, no, you and I, Illinois. Illinois. I ain't okay, my Saint. bad. I, ain't even, I got love for East St. I just don't go over there. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, because you want to live. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, and they got some good fish. <laughs> they got the best fish in the world, but is it worth dying for? Exactly. You know, I don't know. No, it ain't. Nope. And yeah. they got some bad bitches. <laughs> what are they worth dying for? <laughs> now, and they got the casino that pays you. But is it worth dying for? <laughs> no, I pass. So you're living. He's li- He's alive. He's right here on the Hold the Court podcast, man. He made it. My boy, Gary G. Thang Johnson. Come on now. Come on now. I so know we got the sound we, effect. Come on. Are you oh, the air on. horn? Uh, the little bubble, 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 bubble. Nah, nah. We got to do nah, our own nah. sound effect? Nah, we don't nah. got the drink champs thing with the. Oh! <laughs> you know we, just add, we just added in post. We, we just got, add, we, added oh, in okay, post. Okay, you add so let's add, let's act. Hold on. Let's, yeah, because you got all these lights and Yeah, shit. yeah. We'll act. Like, I mean, we got to react to it. I mean, motherfucker, when I came in, I thought Spielberg was directing. Hold on. You know what I mean? Eric, add the fog on right here. Yeah. I saw Eric first. I mean, he got out of a big body. And uh, I said, I'm getting ready to come up in some shit. Hey, and man. then they give me a plastic cup with the tea in it. You know what I mean? You, you ain't got no real glasses or nothing like that. that now that's Cap. Oh, okay. My bad. Sorry. That's Cap. You got a glass mug to say, hold a court podcast. Oh, this is real big shit. Cap. Big Cap. Oh, I see, man. I got to put my glasses on because yeah. I can't put see. Put them up. You need some bifocals. Uh, that ain't I couldn't see that. <laughs> Man, what up, though, man? What's going on with you, bro? So we here. We here, bro. Hey, but hold on. I want to talk about the big shit you done done. No, Come on, now. Dog, you did Disaster Movie. Yeah, back what in else? the day with you Kim Kardashian. You did Scary Movie? Was it a Scary Movie? Too? I did all of that. I did all of that. Hey, uh, run it off real quick. So well, I was, I was in, I was, you know, uh, Scary Movie, Disaster Movie. Um, I did Players Club, Players Ball. Uh, um, TV shows is out the chain. You had your own TV show. I had my own show, TV show that's showing right now on all black network. It's called Grown Folks. Shout out to Brett. Shout out to Brett and Bentley Kyle Evans. Yeah. Got another show that's on there right now. It's called Social Society. It's okay. a talk show. We're doing 21 episodes okay. right now. It's really hot. I'm like a movie critic. Yeah. You know, so all the movies and TV shows that I didn't get on, I really talk bad about them. And, you know, but I'm always in a secret location. You ain't going to never find me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if I'm talking shit about you, you ain't going to catch up with me. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, and back out on the road, slanging these jokes, man, in all the comedy clubs, the improvs. I'm going to be at Riddles next weekend, Riddles Comedy Club in Chicago my, with my man Damon Williams. So we out here, man, in these streets trying to regroup some of the money. Yeah, You regroup, know what I mean? Regroup or Re- recoup? Both of them. They okay. both of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get both of them. Now, you know I'm back. from St. Louis. Now, we were, our words go together. Now, you, and you a Missouri motherfucker. Yeah, you should have caught City. that. Kansas City, Come Missouri, on, bro. Y'all ain't just got barbecue down there. You know what I mean? So we trying to get some of the money back. Uh, 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 they wouldn't let me get a PPPP loan. Uh, I don't know what the fuck that's about. My case is still pending. And I'm like, motherfucker, I'm going to be back to work by the time you... You get this goddamn money to me. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so they wouldn't let me get unemployment. No, man. I mean, and you know drugs. So, uh, bro, hold on. So do comedians, y'all got unemployment? Well, I, well I'm not just a comedian. I do TV and films. Right. Well, I'm a bonafide comic. 
Right. But I but was you're on, a comic first, right? I'm a comic first. Okay. But I'm also a comic that can act. Yeah. See, it's a lot absolutely. of comics can't act. Who are some of the comics? I would you never feel like, say that. I okay. would never say that. I was trying to start some shit. Yeah, well, you, I saw you go there. I was you trying know? to go but there. Listen, you I, don't, follow I don't need that kind of pressure to have to shoot one of them motherfuckers. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and now they, they let you carry a gun with no license. It's not really, out here. Not out here. Okay, well, the ones that be talking shit is in other cities. <laughs> <laughs> But I love everybody, man. I love all the comics, man. They all doing their thing. A lot of them probably got unemployment because they done work. Mm -hmm. A lot of cats has been, especially the ones out here in Hollywood, they done TV and film. So they been on TV. Yeah. And uh, uh, and I've been on TV. But for some reason, you know, to try to get that unemployment, man, when I tell you they want to see your ID, mm -hmm. they want to see your face, you got to do a face recognition. I went through all of it. Yeah. And it looked like the bitch came through the phone and said, uh, we disapprove it. Like, it, it ain't really you. <laughs> hey, bitch, I might have gained a few pounds, but this me. Motherfucker. What is... <laughs> well, we Googled you and your face was slimmer. <laughs> like, Damn. Just give me something. Need to put some respect on G thing. Yeah, man, it wasn't wrong. So when the... And you did the... Mill you, you didn't host some big-ass tours. So right? I hosted a millennial tour. Mm -hmm. That's with uh, Marion and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and... All them Freddie little Ricky, dancing motherfuckers. All of them. Yeah. Selling out. <laughs> we did all the arenas. We yeah. did... We did... Uh, 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 we did Staples. I did Arco Arena. I did every arena. Yeah. Miami, with all the basketball motherfuckers in the playoffs. Yeah. We sold all of them out. Yeah. And I was the host. And uh, 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 so I made a lot of money. Uh, but You still got that money? No. <laughs> uh, you fucked up the bag? I didn't fuck up you the bag. The, the bag. bag. the bag start to run out. And anytime <laughs> you start to go to it, it's getting thinner. Yeah. You say, it's a situation that's about to pop off. And, uh, and so I'm going to need <laughs> So I start calling all my friends with money. Yeah. I called Pete twice. Uh, and what happened? Well, his phone looked like it just didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> that number, no, but his phone is broke. One of them, that number is broke. Oh, yeah, yeah, it really yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's real talk. Oh, everything, bro. Okay, well, I yeah. called all the numbers. And I used to have all of them. And then one time, I kind of went by his house. Yeah. And uh, for some reason, the, the same people that was at the door said, uh, we don't know you no more. And I was like, what's for going on? I got the movie right here. Can you? Can I get Peter signed? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I got the hookup too. Yeah. And uh, well, I called him. I called Eddie Murphy. Eddie. Eddie. Eddie Eddie's a friend of yours, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, well, well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think y'all friends? <laughs> <laughs> this nigga, you spit me. <laughs> well, I thought we was friends. Yeah, I think we still friends. Yeah, it's just it's just hard to get in touch with all these motherfuckers since this pandemic hit. It was easy before the pandemic. Yeah, but it's a little harder now. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't get in coming to America, which I was very disappointed. And um, I was like, Eddie, you put everybody yeah. in coming to America. I saw Gladys Knight. I'm like yeah. she ain't never acted. And um, <laughs> you think you get overlooked? Uh, in yes. Hollywood a lot. Yeah, I, I didn't see you talk about the politics. Yeah, man. And it, you you think maybe it's because I always see you. I've been knowing you for years. Yeah, and you you kind of are solo. You don't really do the click thing no, necessarily. I don't. Do you think it's because you're not in the you know? Well, you in, to know the truth. I yeah. didn't. I never did the click thing. Mm -hmm. The closest that I ever got to a click was probably hanging out with Mike Epps. Right. Um. But I never did that, you know, I'm in your team. Mm -hmm. I never did that. But I think in the beginning when I was working a lot, when I was on all the white shows, the case of emergencies on ABC, the CBS shows, mm -hmm. I was on Punk doing all, yeah. Aston Kutcher mm -hmm. doing a whole season of Punk. I think what had happened, I and this is the truth, y'all gonna hear it first on the podcast. This is uh, Holding Court <laughs> yeah. podcast. Y'all yeah, gonna it. hear it goddamn first. Let's, let's yeah. get the exclusive. Let's get the exclusive. I'm about to give it to you. Yeah, give it to I you. I was gonna save it yeah. for the view. Yeah. But them motherfuckers ain't called me back yeah, yet either. So, well, that's this what I said. Whole, this is Holding Court. I don't like the, the view. view no way. I don't watch the I don't view. Watch Never the view. have. My mama loved that show. I'm yeah. like, mom, I want to get on there just for you can see me on there. Yeah. But fuck the view. And uh, and fuck they point of view. And uh, <laughs> Well, anyway, here's the, here's the skinny. Okay. The reason why I have him blue, blue, I got in my own way. And because when I started doing all those white shows and making all that money doing all those white shows, mm -hmm. I kind of got a little arrogant. So I would come into the comedy clubs, pulling up in the new bins, the drop tops, and, and I'd be looking at the motherfucker and the black people in the comedy club like, hey, motherfucker, what you been on? <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? What you mean? What I been? What the? 
I've been on every goddamn thing. Yeah. But it ain't shit that they watch. Ah. Yeah. So it kind of like turned off Black Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So Black Hollywood, even though I was talented enough to be in all the shits, mm -hmm. they were like, mm, huh, Damn. we don't want to work with them. Really? I don't give a fuck how talented it is. Mm. We pass. You feel like you abandoned your core audience? Uh, I never abandoned the core audience as a as a comedian. Yeah. But as an actor, when I didn't feel that they was giving me the love and the respect of somebody who, and I was younger. Yeah. So me being young, I didn't know better. Fresh out of St. Louis, I'm thinking that motherfucker. Come on, man. I'm showing y'all who. Um, this is show me state. I'm. Yeah. Them motherfuckers didn't give a fuck. So it took me some years to build back those bridges with the people who I fucked over. Yeah. And I didn't even fuck them over. It's just that I was too arrogant. And Hollywood ain't on that shit. They yeah, ain't on that being they arrogant. Unforgiving. And they unforgiving. Especially they, with black folks. Oh, my they God. unforgiving. Bro, bro. Hey, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man. I see a lot of cats that done blew up, that done played the game. Mm -hmm. I never played the game. And so, and do I wish I would have played the game? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the long run, I wish I could have played the game to get to the point where I didn't have to play the game. Yeah, yeah. But I never got to a point where I didn't have to play the game. Did you have a, like, you cool with Eddie? Did yeah. Did you have, like, a mentor or somebody to show you the ropes, or you just obviously had to learn this shit just bumping your head? I learned it bumping my head. Even yeah. the stand-up, when I first came out here, mm -hmm. I was not G-thing. I want that motherfucker that was killing stages in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I was, I man, I remember I took a hit. One time at the Laugh Factory, man, it was the, I, I moved back to St. Louis because the dude who I was staying with, I ain't going to tell you his name, and this motherfucker woke me up at 637. I remember the time. It was 637, 21 seconds after. <laughs> this motherfucker hit me with, uh, hey, bro, you need to go back home because you ain't ready to be out here. I died at the Laugh Factory, and I thought I was killing him. Sorry about that. I thought I was killing him. And uh, I had Will Smith at the show because yeah. my boy Charlie Mack hooked it up. Yeah. He had Will Smith, Jada Pinkett Smith. He had all of the men in black people when they was doing the first men in black. Yeah. He had a whole cast. They was all in them little VIP station. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, this is it. I hit these motherfuckers inside the mouth. I'm mm -hmm. blowing up. Yeah. Nick, I died. Nick, when I tell you, <laughs> only person laugh was Will. And he was not even really laughing. Will hit you with that face like, Ugh! and close that eye. Ugh! Ugh! And I was like, hey, that ain't, that ain't really helping. <laughs> and I was going on a, a, the Men in Black set because Charlie Mack was hooking it up. So I was going over there every day while they were shooting, yeah. thinking that I'm going to get a little roll. So Charlie hit me up and said, gee, um, don't come up to the set today. I'm like, what, what, what happened? Yeah, you know, Will and them just ain't trying to see nobody. I'm like, nigga. This is the set, nigga. Let me tell you something. They banned me from the set, the, 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 the men in black lot, because I had a bad set. Damn. At least that's what I thought. Yeah. Well, anyway, it took me five, six years to get in front of Will Smith again in Philly. And Charlie Mack, shout out to Charlie Mack for hooking that up. Charlie hooked it up, and this just something just happened. The spirit, Charlie was showing one of his movies, and the movie projector went out. Mm -hmm. And they needed somebody to entertain while the movie rejected was getting fixed. And they said, so it, it, you had uh, Avion Crockett, yeah. Tyrese. They wanted Tyrese to sing because it was like a celebrity all something. Yeah. And, and, and nobody wanted to do it. Like, nigga, I'm just here to enjoy myself. And Charlie said, but gee, you want to go up and do a few minutes? Ended up doing about 45 hot minutes. And you killed, killed that bitch, huh? Killed everybody in that motherfucking audience. So you redeemed yourself. In front of Will. Yeah. And then Will came up to me. <laughs> Hit me with the bad boys thing. <laughs> I was like, okay. And that's that, those are some of the bumps yeah. that I yeah. took. But I mean that's the that's the, the learning that's curve. The, that's the learning curve. That's the learning curve. Because you'd rather somebody boo you than be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> really? Oh, them motherfuckers was in there in the audience with hit, hit me with this. <laughs> <laughs> so you just didn't want to fucking say fuck it. You know what? I'm I'm G. No, I was fighting it. Hey, every comic, every comic think he can get the audience back. You cannot. Yeah. Once they say fuck you telepathically, because <laughs> that's what I heard. Yeah. Get the fuck off the stage. Nobody said it. Yeah. But the spirit is in front of me saying, hey, bro, this ain't this ain't gonna work out. Yeah. You need to go back to St. Louis. Nigga, when I tell you I caught the next Southwest <laughs> Airline, it took me. Nine days to get back on Southwest back then. <laughs> and, 
<laughs> I was willing to take every layover they had because I didn't want to get her back home in a hairy no goddamn way. Yeah, man, when I tell you, it, it it took me two and a half years. I got back on the grind in my hometown, St. Louis, to fine tune my craft. Yeah, to fine tune my acting. Yeah. Then I came back out. Let me ask you this: Do you you did you fine tune? Do you use any of those jokes that didn't work? You just retooled them. You I punched them up. Punched them up. And you use and them said them a different kind of way. Yeah. And the yeah. same motherfucker still. That's the learning. And curve. they kill. Yeah. I'm like motherfucker. <laughs> I just did them jokes at the Laugh Factory last night, and them motherfucker died a horrible death. But it's all about your personality. See, comedy ain't about jokes. Mm -hmm. This is the do you do you believe it? Right. You know, I see comics. I, like D Ray, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. and, and and when I yeah, see D Ray, super dope, super yeah. dope. Yeah. And and when D Ray on stage, D Ray be hitting motherfuckers with, cause he talk about bitches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like, it's believable, cause he got bitches. Yeah. And then I see other comments go up talking about bitches. I'm like, you ain't got no bitches. You don't even look like you got bitches. <laughs> yeah. This nigga pull up in the in the car to do this. Yeah. <laughs> you, you call the Uber up here. How the fuck yeah. you got bitches? D Ray was doing that when he didn't have the car. When he didn't even have the car. Yeah. He was, but yeah. he had bitches back then. <laughs> yeah. And, and and so it's a it's. So when I see comics that's not authentic mm -hmm. and they up on stage and they not they not saying shit that's believable. Yeah. You know, like rap, like rap shit. Just I was like gonna rap. say it's just like rap shit. I was, like rap. I was gonna say, because I come from the music side, right? And you know, rappers got their politics that usually align with the street and all that. Do comedians, is it politics within y'all? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we all fuck with certain comedians. Certain comedians will get a call from other promoters. And certain comedians will hate on other comedians and say, no, mm -hmm. don't fuck with him. He bad to work with. And so the whole game is kind of fucked up. We, sh we should have more camaraderie. It should be more love. Yeah. But it ain't. Yeah. You know, and so that's why everybody, because everybody think they funnier than the next cat. Right. And comedy today ain't got shit to do with who's the funniest. Yeah. Because there's some funny motherfuckers that got TV shows that shouldn't happen. Right. I mean, it's a unfunny. So, motherfuckers so let me ask funny. you this: I'm gonna be a little uh, messy and incendiary. The whole shit with Cat Williams and Kevin Hart. I just thought that that was unnecessary mm -hmm. because Kevin is blessed. Mm -hmm. He didn't bless a lot of cats. Yeah, he put his team on. Put his team on. All of them got. On. All of them got money. Fucking right. All of them got million dollar yeah, homes. Fucking million right. Million dollar cars. Yeah. And here's the funny part about Cat. Cat is probably one of the most talented motherfucking comedians. Out there, that nigga is not only smart and funny. Yeah, he's just a brilliant ass comedian. Mm -hmm. That's why he got thirty five goddamn specials. Yeah, cause he's so smart and so creative. So I thought that was unfortunate. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Cat probably went into a little situation mm -hmm. mentally or whatever. I don't know what the, what the problem was. And so you start lashing out at people. Yeah, that you think got your turn, but I think everybody get a turn. Mm -hmm. I don't think they took your turn. I just think it was their turn. Do you subscribe to the whole notion like what Mike Epps says as far as gatekeepers? You know, because he he feels like it can only be one. You know what I'm saying? Well, I they pick they one. I, I I I think that he's right in a certain that they I think white people pick they one. Mm -hmm. White people will pick. Mm, we only gonna let one nigger in today. Mm -hmm. Now, now if he you, used the hard R just if you, yeah, you yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Maybe, hey, we do, we do. Uncomfortable. Hey, yeah, we do got a white producer. My bad. No. But I thought this was the uh, only court podcast. No. I thought that I was able to be free on this. But now I see I got a sense of my word. Uh, <laughs> anytime the producer yeah. interject. Yeah, kids uh, said, oh, you used the hard R. Yeah, uh, we're we going to do that. If you're going to say it, say it with the A. Say it with the A. <laughs> she used that R. <laughs> Oh my God! I'm about hey, to come. That got me sweating. Cut and, uh, myself out. I'm gonna cut myself out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that shit is hilarious. So no, I think that with Mike, uh, what he was saying is that yeah, they only let one in. But Mike been in for so long, man. He's so talented. Yeah. Uh, and he he helped a lot of comics. Mm -hmm. Kevin used to open up for Kevin. I mean, for Mike. Really? Kevin used to open up for Mike. Wow. Uh, Cat used to open up for Mike. Mike didn't have all these cats that didn't blew up. They used to open up for Mike. Wow. So Mike can put a lot of cats on, man. Because Mike, Mike, and, Mike and Kev had a little thing, uh, all right? They, a, they had a little misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. Mis okay. A war. It didn't get bad. Where right. They was going to shoot mm -hmm. at each other. But, you know, they just had a misunderstanding, which I think all this, it was a competitive mm -hmm. kind of misunderstanding. It was like, you know. Yeah. 
You know, I'm funny, motherfucker. Yeah. You know, you getting money. You know, so, you know, it all comes down to respect. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to respect the next person because mm -hmm. you never know how God is blessing. Yeah, real talk. I always tell cats, you, you don't know what that cat been through to get to mm -hmm. going to to get where he at. Real talk. They don't know. Yeah. They don't know about that. I, when, I, when my ex in St. Louis stole all my money out the account, I was sleeping in my car for months. Damn. And I got another story for you. We got time. Yeah, we got time. Tell it. Tell, Tell it. it. So this this story. What she do? When my ex in St. Louis, she 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 took all the furniture out the house. My neighbor next door in my house in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. She said, "Gee, your girl taking all the furniture. Mm -hmm. Y'all still together?" I said, "I thought we was. I'm still sending money down to that bitch in St. Louis." <laughs> and and so she took all the money out the account. Made me homeless. Damn. So I was sleeping in my car. I would go sleep in my car at the Kinko's on Ventura. You know that Kinko's on yeah. Ventura. Which one? Uh, the one um, by the rat, by the uh, Vons. Okay. Right there on uh -huh. Lower Canyon and Ventura. Okay, in Studio City. In Studio City. Yeah. So I would go up there and I would park my car all the way in the back. And I had these movie posters. I had these movie posters where I can block out. So the, I stayed up there so many days where the security guy, he just let me stay asleep. Mm -hmm. I would go inside the Kinko's and go to sleep. Then I'd go in my car and just take it on. And then I would go to the set where they were shooting all of us. Mm -hmm. And I would wash up and eat. Damn. Oh, you was on all of us. Yeah. Right, right, right. This yeah, is before yeah. all of that. Yeah, yeah. So Charlie is the one that hooked that up for me while I was going up there. So one day. Charlie Mack or Charlie Murphy? Charlie Mack. Okay. So one day they was like, and I don't want to say no names. They were like, gee, you got to stop coming up here. Mm -hmm. You know, they, why you keep coming up here on the lot? And how you getting on the lot with no, because mm -hmm. I had people that was on, had shows, because black people was really working on those, um, yeah. on that lot. Yeah. And you know, you know that lot over there, um, uh, the CBS lot. CBS. CBS, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm talking yeah. about. Radford. Radford, there yeah. you go. Yeah. So, so I, had, I was cool with the security guard. Mm -hmm. He would always let me on. So anyway, I would get over there. So one day. Charlie, I called Charlie. I said, Charlie, they won't let me on the lot. Yeah. He said, what? He said, so he said, where you at? I'm going to meet you. So he met me and I told Charlie what I was going through. Mm -hmm. He said, fuck that. You got to tell it to Will. I told it to Will. Mm -hmm. And Will said, and I put this on everything. Will said, the Smiths got you. Mm -hmm. Listen to what I just said. He said, the Smiths Got you. He said, what you want to do? So he let me start doing warm-up mm -hmm. on the show. And they was giving me money every Friday where that's how I got into doing warm-up. Damn. And so I was doing warm-up on the show, and it was enough to get me my own apartment. Yeah. Because they was giving it to me. I was doing like yeah. every Friday. You know, I'm doing warm-up. Yeah. And so Will start introducing me to all the people on the lots. The Yvette Bowsers and all the, the all the people that had TV shows on mm -hmm. that lot, mm -hmm. he, uh, Will was introduced me, and that's I, how I springboarded and got started getting on TV shows. That's mm -hmm. why I got number Mad Love for Will Smith and Charlie Mack, yeah. because them cats came in my life when I really need them. My mama always say, "When do you need help? When you don't. Mm -hmm. When do you need help? When you don't." That's why I'm lawyer to P. Yeah, because P, he don't give a fuck what nobody say about G thing. Right. I'm nigga. Oh yeah, you know I know. That's my dude. Yeah, yeah. He and he didn't fuck you. with all them comics. Yeah. And all the mother. Mm, no, nigga. Yeah. That's my dude. Yeah. Nah, P. Fuck with you for sure. I mean, you know, shit. We didn't did. T remember, funny story. You probably remember this. So remember when we did? Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna tell the story. Yeah. Tell remember me. when we did uh the TV show? What was it? Uh, we did it together. Mm -hmm. Uh, you was the lead. Yeah. Wait, it was me, you. It was Leslie, Big Leslie. Big Leslie. Uh, Christian. What's what's Christian's last Keys, name? Keys. Keys. Christian Keys. Mm -hmm. And remember when and the chick you was helping out at the time. You she remember was, all of that. I do. Come on. And now. she was dark skinned, beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful, dark skinned mm -hmm. chick. Um, do you remember <laughs> we got to the sound stage and it was for Uncle Willie's house? Yes. And we was all sitting around and we was like, okay. And we was like, uh, who got the script? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't one. It wasn't no script. It wasn't no script. P was gonna tell us all the, the moves what to do. P 
P directed that bitch directed out, his head. out his head. Oh, so he did it like rap. Yeah, it was <laughs> just no, like it, rap. It was no script. He knew exactly <laughs> what he wanted to do. Yeah. yeah, he knew exactly where he wanted us to market. Yep. He knew exactly what role he wanted us to imp- improvise. Yep. <clears throat> so he's like, G. He did. This is it. Now, for somebody like you, that was great. Oh, I mean, you that was sound my yeah, because you like nigga, no script, no script. Oh shit, I can ad lib. Yeah, and that. The whole TV show was ad lib, bro. All ad libs. But th- I'll be honest with you, G. That's when I seen really how talented you were. Man, I you know what I'm saying? Because I knew you were funny, mm-hmm. but I was like, this motherfucker carrying a whole TV show with yeah. no script. Like, you know what I'm that saying? That started it. That yeah. started me and P's relationship. Mm-hmm. Because P started putting me in everything. That Mr. Postman movie. Yep, yep. Which I think there's probably... Was, with uh, Tony Cox? With Tony Cox. I yeah. think that movie should have been yeah. a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. That movie was yeah. probably one of P's greatest yeah. hits. Yeah, And he let me... I was only supposed to do three days. Yeah. P let me do the whole goddamn... You in the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. G just keep coming. <laughs> Yeah, that shit, that shit, when I seen you did, you and Leslie, y'all really thought, you Bounced know. Bounced the great Yeah, together. y'all did good. And you can see that her career is still Man. starting from those toolish and that experience back then yeah. on what she's doing now on TV and the commercials Man, and listen, everything. I look I'm at happy big, for I her. I look at Big Leslie, I'm like, she still go by Big Leslie? Yeah. Okay, I look at her, I can remember uh, me, me and Big Leslie talking on the phone mm-hmm. and her just really trying to figure it out. Trying you know to figure what I mean? it out. And trying to get on. That's what, like what you said earlier. You never know who God going to bless. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? Never know. She didn't ever think it. No. Was, she never had no kind of way. She, she was trying to. She, that's, and I look up and I'm like, damn, Big Leslie on Saturday, Saturday Live. Live. You know what I mean? Saturday I Live. can remember just her trying to figure it out and trying to get in where she fit mm-hmm. in. And, you know, and it's now a Eddie, thing. Eddie loves her. Yeah. Eddie will put her in anything. Really? Well, he, I, oh, he put her in Coming he to put America, her in, too. And she killed yeah. in Coming to America to me. Yeah. And so, Leslie, but you know what? Her journey and, and how hungry she was and how blessed. See, God had just, see, I, and I hate to go, you know, I will go church on y'all. No, go ahead. This is you know, the Holding Court podcast. We do it all. Go yeah, ahead. And, Take and, us and to church. I will. And, and mm. here, 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 you stupid. So <laughs> my mama always That's tell fine. me, she said, <laughs> if nobody will help you, God will personally come down and help you. Yeah. This is how I've been surviving. Mm-hmm. Because God personally comes down and help me. And people, when God set me down, and this, to only people that spiritual can receive this, Mm -hmm. I actually was talking to God. Mm -hmm. And this is no joke. And I I ain't, I ain't no drugs and nothing. I'm really, it is who it is. I see your pupils. You good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, You sober right now. Oh, I, know, I, I know drugs when I see them. Yeah. Right. You, yeah. know you know what better than me? Because we, we had a high motherfucker come up in here, but go ahead. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> rolling, you understand. Rolling you, on some uh, shit. Uh, well, you know, you get yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. So I tell people is you never know. And if you're not still, see, mm-hmm. you can you can be moving so much that you I know you how can, to peace be still. De- boy. Peace be still. Boy. <laughs> so you got a little church in you. A little bit. Yeah, you ain't just slap motherfucker for no reason. Nah, you know, it something. came with a spiritual slap. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's what my whole walk is right now. Mm-hmm. My whole walk is God didn't set me down for a reason. You know, I always say this on my on my on my social media that 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 God uh didn't bring me this far to lead me. Mm-hmm. He still got something for me to do. Mm-hmm. So it's me slanging the jokes, it's me acting, it's me, because I'm a changed person than where I was back then. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm like, nigga, I fucks with everybody. <laughs> I, I used to be looking at you, nigga, you ain't talented, nigga, what the fuck is you in here for? Damn. Hey, I ain't gonna Follow lie, G, you probably don't even know the first time we met. I remember it, but I was with Cat Williams, and I met you at Robbie Reed's. Bobby Reed's house at the on the Fourth Fourth of July. I uh, remember that. You remember that? Yeah, you. I think cat. you was fresh we was out outside. here. Yeah, we was outside in the backyard. Yeah, and you was fresh out here. I think, and you, I was too. You had a very nice sport jacket on. <laughs> like you was really working. And uh, what you mean? You made him with the long hair? With the, uh, with yeah, the, with, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I had, I, the, yeah. I, I, I had the long hair before all of this. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't this strong looking, but he, right, right. Yeah, I wasn't. he wasn't this strong. Yeah, looking, I wasn't. He didn't, he going. Really, too. Yep. And uh, so, <laughs> but that's where I saw you at with Cat. Yeah. Me and Cat was really cool, then. Yeah, yeah. And 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 and, and Robbie loved Cat. Yeah, for love, sure. Love Cat. Sure. And Robbie was one of the influencers in my life too. Mm-hmm. When I was out here, I gotta give credit where it's due. 
Uh, you know, because there's a lot of people that's like, I ain't made it, and they get angry. Mm -hmm. That ain't me, man. Right. You know, because. But I wouldn't say that you haven't made it, though. I, I can't mean, say I ain't never made it. I've been on a lot. Yeah. But yeah. have I got that where, you know, where, you know, I can just take trips, you know, and I pull up in that. Yeah. You you pull up in that kind of car, which that don't mean shit. But if when you own apartment buildings, like right. my boy Mike own strip malls. Yeah. That motherfucker out. He showed me, he FaceTimed me. This nigga was building a house. Yeah. I was like, building a house? I mean, bro, I own. You know, I know you. Three, you see, know what I'm saying? See, that's what I'm talking but, about. Yeah. That's, but but what I'm saying is you really, I mean, I get what you're saying. Uh -huh. I totally get it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Maybe you haven't reaped the the financial, financial benefits. you know, rewards that mm -hmm. you're looking to do. But, mm -hmm. I mean, you've been in some big-ass movies. You've I touched made some a money. lot of stages. Yeah, I touched you know a lot saying? of stages. I made and some And you touched money. a lot of people. Think about how many people, people you done made laugh. I totally, the, totally you know what I'm agree. Saying? I made a lot of people laugh. Uh, I made some money. Have I made that money where, you know, where, like, mm, mama, buy your crib or... Right, right. And But that's all coming. Yeah. You know, I always believe my faith is strong enough. Yeah. My talent is still... I'm still sharp yeah. at this game. I mean, I'm still... I'm, I'm, I call myself like the LeBron in this comedy game. You know what I mean? I can still do this shit at a high level. Yeah. You know what I mean? I always I always say that, you know, I see these young cats and, and I'm like... You know, I'm I'm next. You know that, right? So let me ask you, because we did I got the hook up together, right? Yeah. And P he he cast that with a lot of social media cats. Uh comics. Uh-huh. So you being I I I know me and you gotta be around the same age, but you know, you didn't come from the social media area. Yeah. What do you think? Do you what do you think about the social media uh Instagram comics? Facebook cast. Fa yeah, compared to stand up like from where we you know came from. Be. Yeah. Where, 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 where How I do you came, feel about you Well, know, I feel that you know, times and change. Mm -hmm. I feel the times and change. I feel that, you know, uh it's almost like, you know, it's like what I was saying earlier. You know, are we still using flip phones? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, or uh, or or comics up on stage smoking a cigarette like Red Fox. Mm, yeah, kill you motherfuckers. Right. Mm, yeah. No. Right. Comedy has changed and involved. It has revolved into to social media. Yeah. And so those quick seconds, they didn't build an audience. Right. And they you either gonna get either you either gonna play the game mm -hmm. or they gonna play you. Right. And that's why them cats is making so much money. Yeah. That's why these cats are on tour. You got motherfuckers like DC Young Fly. Is he really getting paid? You know what I mean? Shout out to DC Young Shout Fly. Shout out to DC Young Fly. Yeah. And 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 all you can do as a vet comedian, do you say, oh, I'm a vet. I ain't gonna change. I ain't gonna evolve. I'm not gonna step my game up. And then they look at you like, mm -hmm. look at the OG. What's up, OG? And you like, <laughs> you see this nigga go on stage and he destroys. Yeah. And you like, oh my God. So my thinking of that. I'm gonna compete with you, right? Now I might not compete compete with you with the followers, mm -hmm. but motherfucker, guess what? Yeah, I'm gonna take. I'm next. I learned this from Said the Entertainer. He said, no matter how many laughs you get, what you say on stage, motherfucker, you next. Mm -hmm. And I don't give a fuck where your laughs come from, motherfucker. You get to laugh at the shit I'm getting ready to say. I don't give a fuck what you just blew up that stage. Then you can flip that bitch over. Yeah. And my attitude to the game. This is probably why my I survived so long. Like, nigga, that was cute. Mm -hmm. But here I come. Yeah. And that's been my thing. That's why I was able to host a tour with a bunch of kids. Mm -hmm. Me being the, the, the older dude hosting a millennial tour. You hear what I just said? The yeah. tour is called Millennial. Yeah. <laughs> nigga, they was calling me Uncle G out in that bitch. <laughs> but they knew they couldn't fuck with yeah. the segment that I did called Sit Your Ass Down. <laughs> To go in that audience where they ain't coming to see you. Yeah. It was the 10th show when niggas was YouTube and all the shit that me destroying cats in the audience. It started getting YouTube and started getting followers and the whole yeah. nine. They said, so now when I would walk through the audience, they were like, oh, you the dude. <laughs> Sit your ass down. Now they waiting on that, that part yeah. of the show. Yeah. yeah. How I started that Sit Your Ass Down, how I started it was, I started with the 90s block party with Teddy Riley and them. So Teddy, after them 112s to go up and kill the stage, they would try to do an intermission. Mm -hmm. And once they do an intermission, the crowd wouldn't come back. So I said, no, nah, fuck that. They got to see Teddy Riley now and Aaron Hall. They got to mm -hmm. see Guy. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to go out in the audience. I'm going to make sure that they don't leave. 
And that's how I started. And I mm. started telling my ah, sit started, your ass down. I started selling niggas, yeah. sit it down, sing, do this, that, and the third. And how I got all that from my experience on doing warm up on TV shows. Yep. And I just transformed that to the big ass audience. Yeah. So now the show became the show. So now they ain't they waiting on it. Now motherfucker, the the, the, the stage manager and the and the, the promoter, like, G, is your segment. Yeah. Go on out there, you got 25 minutes. And motherfucker, the, 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 it was so big, nobody left. Mm -hmm. It got so big where the owners, I mean, the, the, the arenas started saying, we're not making no money mm. on the Millennial Tour because nobody's coming to the, to the concession stand. Damn, because you you tell because they you making them sit their ass down. I'm not only making them sit down; they don't want to leave. Yeah, they want to see who I'ma kill next. Yeah, <laughs> so all the shit is on the drummer trying. They got these cameras following me, so you can see them motherfuckers on the thing. So it was uh, that it was a real production. Yeah, so it wasn't like you can just what the fuck is he doing? No, yeah. motherfucker, you see it just like you see the concert. Yeah, and that started it, and so I took it to the millennial tour, mm -hmm. and that went, it took it to a whole nother level. Let me ask you something. I'm a I'm a transition a little bit. Transition. Uh, what you think about uh uh Kwame Brown? I heard about that. <laughs> what he, you think about that? I I I am a basketball buff. Okay. I know. I follow I know you you yeah, follow sports. So I follow yeah. sports. I know about yeah. golf and all that. I play and golf. I don't yeah, you can you play golf? Did you Real do golf good. beef? I did golf beef. Okay. Yeah, I, I golf with them with big uh with uh with Percy. Percy. And all yeah, big Percy. Red, red, grand, all them. I, I <laughs> okay. play ball. Jay can Phillips. can Greg can Greg play? Cause yeah. he be out there. Greg, Greg, Greg can play. Okay. Jay Phillips can play. Okay. Uh, a lot of comments. Rav Harris. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot of comedians. Said the entertainer can play. It's a lot of comics that take that golf shit. Yeah. They don't just have the outfit on. They really can hit the ball. I never, I never went to the golf beef, but I see y'all do it every Man, year. It's yeah. a beautiful thing in gambling. Yeah. You be, <laughs> motherfucker be Venmoing people with their money right there. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker be PayPal. Hey, bro, PayPal that old old. And I ain't talking about where you, you get it at the end. Yeah. If I beat you that hole, I want my money <laughs> in. So golf beef is a motherfucker. So Kwame... He never really was a good player. Okay. Facts. He never really was. Okay. He got a real break. That means somebody was really praying for him to go to the league. Yeah. Michael Jordan basically handpicked him, right? Put him right there in yeah. the position that he needed. Mm -hmm. And that comes from having a good spirit. See, that's why I say about social media cats. Would it sustain? See, mm -hmm. you can get all this, but would it sustain? Mm-hmm. See, that's where the talent comes in. Right, at. right. That's how you sustain it. Exactly. You know, exactly. that's why Eddie ain't never got to do another motherfucking movie because that nigga is a is the king. Right. I mean, to do a whole all them carries and they, and and can really act. Right. Jamie, he ain't got to do that shit. The motherfuckers. So what I said about Kwame, he never really had it, mm -hmm. and he knows it. See, it. Don't nobody know like you know. You can fake it. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of motherfuckers do too. A lot of people fake it yeah. until they say, "Come on back out here." Yeah, and then yeah. who can still play as Vince Carter? Mm -hmm. I saw that motherfucker that's dunking the studio on a a plaid suit, and it looked like it was that hard material. It wasn't that. <laughs> 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 I saw him dunking that in a in a, a plaid suit. So the whole Kwame situation, you know, he he know what it was. That's yeah. why he didn't really say that. But what I'm saying is, with his reaction, him going at Charlemagne, him yeah. going at everybody so hard. Now, do you think that was he the one going at Matt Barnes the other day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Becky with the good hair, mistake. Yeah, Becky yeah. with the good hair. Yeah, that's what he was calling him. So I'm saying <laughs> that's what he called Matt Barnes. That ain't to be played with. Matt Barnes from from Sac. I know, right? I knew you. And a yeah, yeah, yeah. and a real that. hood dude. Uh, uh, I play uh, golf with. Uh, uh, oh, okay. And Brad, Matt was one of the ones that wanted his money right away. So, do you think that that <laughs> Kwame had a had a point though? To like basically what he was saying is what what I got out of it. The message was that black people in general deal with each other so heavy handedly, yeah. and especially in media, we so quick to tear each other down. Absolutely. Do you, you would you agree with that? I thought, but but he just did the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they did him, so he came and did them. Right. So it was like, oh, uh, you you shot at me? Yeah. Load up the truck. I'm yeah. about to come and shoot all y'all. Yeah, that nigga launched some fucking Oh, uh, he yeah. was real some studs. atomic atomic bomb. And and it was almost coming out of desperation that let me try to cause he faded into the to mm -hmm. the black, to the back. I mean, that motherfucker went into that 
You know, if you saw the <laughs> Simpsons, that motherfucker went into that green grass. <laughs> you talk about the meme? Yeah. <laughs> you get exactly he, what I'm talking about. he's sinking to the... That motherfucker <laughs> sunk into that, that green grass so quick. And, and, and basically, he was trying to make a name again for himself, but they like, we know your name. Yeah. And it's just, it's unfortunate. Yeah. But we as black people, we do go at each other very hard. Yeah, I agree. And, and I agree. It's, sometimes it's uncalled for. I agree because, you know, I deal with some of the shit from my hometown. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you know, most of your hate comes from- From your where, hometown. Where you from. Don't, let's you know get, don't let me get started on that Yeah, now. you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I don't know if we got yeah. enough show for us. <laughs> <laughs> talk about how St. Louis, uh, 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 man, let me tell you something. They made me yeah. this strong. Yeah. St. Louis is a motherfucker. Your hometown. It, my hometown. Yeah. But they also was the ones that made me like, nigga, get your man, I remember this. And I, I hate I got a lot of stories. Yeah. You know, Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me just say this. I was promoting shows in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Before I started doing stand-up, mm -hmm. I was promoting them. Mm -hmm. I was doing them big. I hooked up with this cat called Robin Tate. He owned Contemporary. They the ones who produce. They the ones that put the money up. Listen to me. You're hearing it live on Holding Court. Mm -hmm. They the ones that put the money up for the Kings of Comedy. Oh, wow. Okay. It's called Temporary Production. Mm -hmm. Robin Tate. I don't know where Robin Tate at right now. They put up the money, so they allow me to promote shows in all their venues in St. Louis mm -hmm. for free. As long as I pack them and I was selling them out. Mm -hmm. This is how I got my money to come out here. Yeah. To St. Louis. Oh, you was eating. I was eating. I had money. Yeah. I was doing the Fox Theater, selling the Fox Theater out 4,500 seats. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about $45 a ticket. I was going to the box. I was getting check checks. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Check checks. <laughs> Real checks. <laughs> Real checks. Nick Bolton. All kinds of shit. Well, anyway, <laughs> I was doing those shows and, and, and how bad St. Louis started treating me. Now I want to host them. Yeah. This is when I started. Now I want to host. Mm -hmm. This is when I took my black ass on stage. And I had a beauty shop. Yeah, I was getting money. You owned a beauty shop? I owned a beauty shop. I owned one too in Atlanta. 15 chairs. I had a beauty shop, nails, spa. I lost whack. my shit. Did your shit work out? Worked out. Oh, my shit we, didn't work out. I yeah, lost we my shit. Up selling. Don't Gorilla Black got a salon too? Or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, Gorilla Black got one. And Must be yeah. the business. It's, a big, I, I it's big yeah. business. It was big business when I was doing it because we was doing <laughs> curls for 1995. This is how big it was. <laughs> talking about white folks. Carefree, white folks. Lesser silk curls. Lying around the corner. <laughs> well, anyway, to make a long story short, I hosted a show uh, at this place called the Westport Playhouse. It was in the round. Mm -hmm. And I had DL, Faison Love, and, and, and some more. DL, Faison Love, no, Chocolate. This, this comedian named Chocolate. I had Chocolate. And what happened, I sold the tickets, uh, most of the tickets. We sold our two shows, uh, 1,500 seats. Mm hmm I saw all of them through my beauty shop. Mm -hmm. They would just come up to the beauty shop, commercials, beauty shop, and they were selling them out. I sold the tickets, so I'm on stage hosting. And this one dude that I sold the tickets to sitting right up front, and he was like, man, get your bitch ass off the stage. Nigga, you ain't funny. You horrible. I'm like, hey, Craig, nigga, I sold you those tickets. <laughs> man, what DL at? Man, get your ass. This how hard St. Louis was on my ass. Damn. I like I might not be able to host these shows. <laughs> hey, man, when I tell you that motherfucker ran me off that goddamn stage in St. Louis. So I said, I wasn't going back to St. Louis until I kind of made it. Yeah. Because they ran me. I got ran from out of there, ran from out of here to go back there. Yeah. To try to get it together. So I finally went back home to St. Louis. And I went back home. And it was years later. Yeah. Went back home with Mike Epps. Mike said, you want to come to St. Louis? I said, yeah. Took me to the Fox Theater. And that motherfucker who ran me off the stage at my own show <laughs> years ago, yeah. ran into that country motherfucker. He had on some some straight bullshit. You know. <laughs> you fired his ass oh, off. Uh, I didn't even get a chance to get into my set. I said, Craig, <laughs> nigga, you got some good seats. <laughs> you ain't gonna wanna sit with him after I get done. <laughs> Man, I, I tore his ass up. I didn't even do no jokes. I stayed on him the whole time. Yeah. That nigga would try to get backstage to be a fan. When I tell you, I told the security, I don't even want to see that nigga. 
I want to see him. Where Craig at now? I don't know what Craig at. I think he he's somewhere he's, down bad, fucked no, up. No, he probably stealing PPP loans, <laughs> like the rest of these motherfuckers out here in these streets, stealing the government career to come get him. So that's been my life, man. Yeah. You know, a lot of like I said, when you see somebody, you like, oh wow. They never know what that person been through. Yeah, and they don't care. Mm -hmm. That's real. Motherfucker, don't give up. Nah, yeah. nah. Yeah, you know, that was nice. So, one thing, uh, one thing that I say, bro, is you. It's never no sympathy for winners. Nah. Winners don't get no sympathy, nah. bro. None. They don't give a fuck. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. As yeah. long as you winning, if you even look like you winning, man, listen. that's all right though. You winning though. <laughs> and here, but here the funny part though with that, they always want you to help them. Mm -hmm. But motherfucker, you're the one that was just talking. To... Come on, <laughs> man. <laughs> Let me go on the road with you, man. I got a dude right now talking about can he go on the road with me? And I'm like, motherfucker, I ain't got no road money for you. Yeah. This money is for me. And uh, but he my boy, and I'm thinking about, but he don't do stand up. He just want to be on the road. I like, I don't. What's he do? Huh? What's he do? He just want to roll. He just want to be on the road and get a check. Like yeah. he, he want like, whoever but, be on the road with Cedric and Mike and all those. Yeah. He want to be them to me. Yeah. I'm like, no. Nah. So he just want to be a roadie. That nigga. He want to be a roadie. He want to iron yeah. shirts and he, he, he <laughs> want to go get my bags. He want to rent the the the. Uh, uh, he want to rent the 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 uh, the uh, what's the car? He want to get the 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 car. The Sprinter. No, he want to rent the car in the in the city. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So yeah. whatever car for you can drive you around in. He want. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Car service. He want to get the car service. Yeah, he want to yeah, do yeah. that. He want to go to the room and get the other money, yeah. the other half. And I'm like, dude, you ain't even that big to go do all that. Like, uh, them let, niggas might not let, even give me the money if I send you in the room to go get my money. On the next episode of the Holding Court podcast, you ran into somebody trying to bully you out here. Oh yeah, I had a few niggas that tried to bully G thing. Really. Yeah, they and I, I don't know why they, why because nigga I'm from St. Louis. Yeah, <laughs> got all the guns, got everything. Yeah, I mean, but see, but but they take your weakness, your kindness. Yeah, weakness. yeah.